Hi everybody. When we're building our apps, thinking in terms of props, state, components, JSX, tags, render method, and so on, is probably not the first thing on our mind. Really, the problem we're trying to solve is this. We have some data, and we want to get the data displayed on screen in some form or fashion. And this data isn't going to be nicely self-contained inside one of our components. It won't be a hard-coded string or even a simple prop that we just are passing up and down the entire component hierarchy. It'll often be data that is stored in a function in an array, in something completely external, like a web service that returns the data on demand. The, now, the way we integrate with data is often not very clean cut, like the examples we've been seeing so far. So what we're going to do in this video is look at some of the tricks we have for taking data in all its various forms and making sense of how to display it and visualize it on screen. To help make sense of all this, we're going to be working on a simple example where we're going to try all the various tips and techniques we're going to look at for making data in React work easily. And to get started, you don't have to write all this code from scratch. Just like in the previous video, there's a starting point, it's a code pen that contains some things. Just go to bit.ly slash React Data UI. Those some things are some starting point markup, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and a little bit of JSX to just get our app up and running. And I'm going to be showing the exact same app right now in our code editor in Visual Studio Code. So feel free to use code pen or your favorite code editor, depending on whatever makes you comfortable. And if the app was, if everything works fine right now from a starting point, you should see a yellow circle displayed on screen on the right hand side. And let's walk through this code just to get an idea of what we're starting from so we can look at what modifications we want to make moving forward. So starting from our React DOM.render call, we just have a div element with a circle component that we're passing in a BG color prop with a value that is a hex color, which I'm assuming is the color of the circle, which you see right there. And all this content is being printed to a, a div element whose ID value is container. So pretty straightforward from the entry point for our app. And our circle component doesn't have a whole lot going for it either. The bulk of its material is in the circle style style object, where we have some of our CSS properties that you want to apply to this particular element, padding, margin, display, background color, border radius, width, and height. And all we're returning is an empty div right now. And of course, our circle is yellow and circular because we took a square div and get a border radius of 50%. It's often been a common question I've had in the past on how what I have right here ends up displaying a circle on screen. It's because of the border radius trick where you then have a fixed width and height that kind of gives you a the, the illusion of a circle where you have a square whose corners are of size 50%. And that's what gives you a circle. I wish there was a circle element in HTML. There isn't. And so the solution is to do something like this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is this. When you're working with data, it's often very rare you're going to be dealing with content that is going to be hard-coded like this. And so like, how often are you going to have a circle component with a value that's going to specify directly inside your React on the render call? Almost rarely, right? We touched upon this briefly in the video where we looked at all the various things in JSX that we need to be aware of. One of the things is that your JSX doesn't have to be shackled and isolated to just a small part of your return statement for a component or your React down at render call. Your JSX can actually live anywhere. And so for example, I'm going to get a variable called var the circle, and inside it, what I'm going to specify is the exact content that instantiates the circle component. And just like JavaScript, I'm going to go ahead and close this statement with a semicolon. And if I want to print this on screen, all I have to do is replace the call that I have to the circle component with the angle brackets when it's an expression and specify the name of a variable, the circle. And if I refresh this page, you'll see that the example still works. Nothing has really changed because from a JavaScript point of view, from a React point of view, what we've done is almost identical to what we had before. The only difference is that instead of having to have my circle component in its details, like its props, instantiated and defined inside the React render call, we can now modify that in a more convenient location from just the, the circle variable. And what this means is that we can even go further. We don't have to be limited to just having a variable with one element hard-coded. Let's go to function. Function show circle. And inside of it, I'm going to specify var colors equals, and it's going to be a lot of you know bizarre looking colors, so bear with me here, 393E41. Let's do the next color, E, hashtag E, 94F37. You know, if all these values are kind of, you know, just bizarre for you, feel free to use like your simple red, yellows, blues, and greens. They're going to be four colors. I picked four from a, a cool 
Coolershot.co, which is a cool color template um, palette generating site. So that's where these are coming from. 1C89BF. And the last one is A1D363. All right, so now I have an array called colors inside my function called show, cir show circle, show circle. And then I'm gonna have a little function called var random color, rand for random, math.floor, and inside I'm gonna put math.random times colors.length. Basically, I wanna pick a color that is a random one from the list of colors that we have in our array. And all I'm gonna do here is return uh, our, our circle component. So let me go and just copy this circle bg color and instead of having the color be hard coded i'm going to specify it as in the brackets colors slash ran so let's go and delete the the circle variable declaration here and notice what i've done here though even though i am not in strict jsx or even react territory with this function because i'm defining jsx and i want a color value to be specified from an, an array index, it's a JavaScript expression. I'm wrapping them in the curly brackets, just like we've seen before, if we were to do this, for example, inside the React Dummit render call or in the return statement for a particular component. So now let's change this to show circle. Show circle. All right, so if I were to refresh this page now, note what we'll see here. You'll see a circle being displayed on screen, and every time I refresh the page, there's a very good chance a different color will appear. And that is because the value for the circle is not coming from exclusively from just this call to show circle. It's actually being randomly generated. And we're returning an object whose prop for the color is one of these four values that you see right here. And so just by doing this, we've greatly decoupled this whole data from UI conversation we've been having, where before all the data we wanted to care about had to be inside our component or inside the render call in React DOM, which often was greatly limiting in terms of the kind of things you want to do with the data that we're having in, you know, in a typical environment. Now, no conversation about data can really be satisfactory without talking about arrays. And so, for example, let's say I want to display multiple circles on screen, right? I can just copy paste a few times. So here I have like three show circle calls. If I refresh the page, you'll see three circles displayed on screen. Let me resize it a bit so they're all in one row. And that is great. That's the convenience of having JSX and a function like calls, which, which is the show circle function wrapped in the curly brackets. But really though, if I have hundreds of circles that I want to display, this approach doesn't really scale. It actually is the opposite of that. It becomes very tiring and burdensome. So let's go ahead and look at how we would do this. I'm gonna go ahead and move my colors array up one level so it's available more broadly. And let me add a few more colors. You know, we only have four right here. Four is never enough to really make, make sense of like a large amount of data. And so just like before, I'm gonna add some hash, hex values. So hashtag 85FFC7, hashtag 29737, I forgot the quotation marks, hashtag 297373, two more, hashtag FF8552, and the last one is hashtag A40E4C. All right, so now we have our colors array, which originally had four values, now has eight values, and it's no longer tied to the show circle function. In fact, let me go ahead and just delete the show circle function for now, just to just to keep things more compact because it is a video and I don't like to scroll up and down to see what's going on. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is this. We have our colors. Let's create a way of generating these exact same values one more time. So var render data, it's a new array, and it's just gonna be empty right now. And what I wanna do inside this array is create a circle for each item in our colors array. So before we were creating one circle with a random color, in this case, we wanna have a circle for each color. And so I'm gonna create another array. And inside of it, I'm gonna populate the various circles with the color that you see in the colors array. So for var i equals zero, i is less than colors.link, and i plus plus. Just a standard for loop to go through each item in our colors array. And render data.push, and inside of it, I'm gonna put circle bg color equals 
colors bracket i and let's do the close bracket as well after that bg color i and let's see does this look right no the close bracket comes after after this this actually there's one more thing that i notice is also incorrect besides the initial positioning of these weird curly brackets if you look at the colors the same two values are being repeated let's go ahead and fix that up e 94 f37 now this is probably one of those reasons why it makes sense to use more simple names but i'm just using the colors that i got from the palette generator so i'll try to keep that in mind for future videos anyway we now have our render data array populated with all the circles that we want to display on screen now now what we're going to do now is just replace the call from show circle to just say render data now even though we have an array of content there's nothing special you need to do to have this data make sense to react just wrap your array inside the curly brackets to make it a javascript expression and everything will just work at least it's let's hope so let's refresh this page to see how everything looks and as you can see now we now have eight circles each matching the item in the colors array that we had initially now are we done here and you might look like we are but there is one thing to keep in mind though let's go ahead and look at the react dev tools to see what's going on notice that you'll see an error here and let me actually i'm actually going to pop it out so it's more easily visible and so notice one of the things that you see right here you see a warning it says each child in an array or iterator should have a unique key prop and it points to very specifically this particular example right here and so what we're going to do for this is simple is the reason for why you gain that error message is because one of the things that React does is it tries to keep good track of where every UI element is so that it can make a change and update as needed depending on what value underlying that UI has been modified. When you have an array of content like this, that you know, information that React needs to make sense of each element isn't there anymore. It has no concept of what each DOM element is and what data is backing it. So it needs our help to help figure that out and the way it does that is by asking us to provide a key prop and uniquely identifying each of the elements that we are trying to visualize from our data source. And so that sounds complicated, but it really is not. The error message is actually pretty helpful by saying we need to specify a key. And so all we're going to do here is for this particular call where we are instantiating our array, uh, render data array with circle components, is pass in a prop called key, and it's going to equal any arbitrary value you want, so I'm going to specify i plus color. That's it. And what this will do is specify a col actually colors bracket i. And this will ensure that what gets specified a key is a unique combination of both the hex code and the current index position in our array. And if I refresh the page, you're not going to see anything different, but the big difference will be though that you will no longer see the error displayed on screen. You might see other warnings because I'm using Babel and for getting the in-browser transformation, but you won't see that for the error. So keep that in mind when you are working with data. You might have to specify a unique prop via key to identify the element so React can better take track of all of this. And so with that, we're actually in a pretty good spot to really say that's all really all there is to data and how to get that to display as UI in React. Because the big thing to keep in mind is this, and to reiterate what we've done before is JSX is JavaScript. And that's something that is often hard to see in some of the previous videos we've, we've looked at. But in this one, it's very clear by having our JSX content inside a variable, inside a function, inside an array, just having it be all over the place beyond just the, the regions we'd consider safe for React. We kind of see the, the power that JSX has by being part of JavaScript, which allows you to use all of the various JavaScript tips and tricks you might have learned to manipulate your content and still get valid JSX that your React app can make sense of. And so take a look at this, for example, right? Here's a for loop. Here's where we are populating our array with all the various color values. Now, in this case, this is what it looks like in JavaScript. There's JSX inside the push method for a render data array. If you were to look at it and expand it and see what the React version of it looks like, notice that even though we're not inside our render method or inside a return statement for a component, the JSX translation from Babel makes 
good work of the JSX inside this arbitrary for loop and turns it into appropriate JavaScript that a browser knows what to do. So there you have it, a very quick overview of how to take data and display that data as UI because ultimately what we're doing in React is nothing too crazy. We're just trying to solve the age old problem of I have data from arbitrary locations, sometimes probably just from my code itself, the user might generate it, it might be coming from a server, and I just want to visualize it. And we looked at several ways of being able to do that. Partly the ultimate trick though is because your JSX is JavaScript, you can put your JSX anywhere and you can make sure to just make sure to use the curly brackets and it'll render properly when you want to display it in some reactized component. All right, if you have any questions, post in the forums at forum.group.com where I and others will be happy to help you out. If you like this video, tell your friends and enemies and anyone in between that about this video so that they can learn about React and data and all the cool stuff that goes on. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that come out in the series. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter to be notified of just interesting things that I'm sharing that often includes retweets of other cooler stuff that other people are sharing as well. So might be some interesting web development stuff, animal videos, just whatever seems exciting and interesting at that moment. And there's also a book, Learning React, where all the stuff that I'm talking about is available in text form that you can hold and you know, flip the pages through, smell the pages even. It smells like paper, which is you know, a rare commodity these days. And so if you're into holding a book instead of a video or looking at online tutorials, check out the book. And with that, I will see you all next time.